Welcome to our Strawberry Moon gift practice today. And I hope that this is a wonderful practice for all of us. We have this weekend the strawberry full moon. And so we will enjoy a practice, more of a yin practice today in honoring the moon and the gifts within ourselves. So take a moment to settle in and find any comfortable position for your body. And bring your awareness to your breath. Let the cool, fresh air enter through your nostrils. And exhale through your open mouth. Deep nourishing inhales. And deep nourishing exhales. Let yourself settle in. We'll cherish the feminine side of our bodies today. Ida, the yin, the yin side. We're going to start with a mudra that is a little bit tricky and will cause your mind to have to think a little bit. And I'll stay close so I can show you as best as possible. And smile at the complexity of this mudra. And then we'll see how it makes us feel. So let's start by warming our hands up. This is a mudra of generosity. Surabi mudra. Which translates into cow. Welcome to all who are joining. We're just getting started. We're warming our hands for a special mudra. So we're going to bring our fingertips together and then let the middle finger of the left hand start to come around and find the fourth finger of the right hand. And then the third finger of the right hand Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me start over. I, I messed that up already. It, it confuses me and I tried this a couple times this morning. So bring our hands together again. It doesn't help that Sparkle is throwing my card off the bed. And then the third middle finger of the left hand is going to come around and find the pinky of the right hand. And the same on the other side. So we're kind of making a little bit of a cross. And then the index finger of the right hand will find the fourth middle finger and the index finger of the left hand will find the fourth finger. So you end up with your fingers just essentially crossing and finding those of the opposite hand and your thumbs are together. I'm not even sure if mine are right at this point. So just do your best. And we'll bring this mudra down by our heart. It's supposed to kind of represent the udder of a cow.
and breathe here for a moment. This mudra is good for balancing vata dosha. We have a lot of wind right now in the Northeast and also awakening Manipura ch chakra. And this was something that we focused on last week. So with this, you might start to feel some spiritual radiance. And we'll let that go. And I'll start our practice with three sounds of the bell. And find a place where you can place your legs up against a wall for waterfall pose. And move with ease to find that place. maybe putting something soft under your body and then placing your legs up bringing your your hand to your belly and your heart and feeling the water flowing through your body. And I'll read to you from one of my favorite passages in Breeding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. The Gift of Strawberries. In a way, I was raised by strawberries fields of them, white petals with a yellow center. Like a little wild rose, they dotted the acres of curl grass in May during the flower moon. Wabig, wane, gizi. We kept good track of them, peeking under the trifoliate leaves to check their progress. After the flower finally dropped its petals, a tiny green nub appeared in its place. And as the days got longer and warmer, it swelled to a small white berry. These were sour, but we ate them anyway, impatient for the real thing. You could smell ripe strawberries before you saw them. The fragrance mingling with the smell of sun on damp ground. It was the smell of June and the strawberry moon. Ude mini gitsis. I'd lie on my stomach in my favorite patches, watching the berries grow sweeter and bigger under the leaves. Each tiny wild berry was scar scarcely bigger than a raindrop, dimpled with seeds under the cap of leaves. Even now, after more than 50 strawberry moons, finding a patch of wild strawberries still touches me with a sensation of surprise, a feeling of unworthiness and gratitude for the generosity and kindness that comes with an unexpected gift, all wrapped in red and green. Really, for me, 
Oh, you shouldn't have. They still raise the question of how to respond to their generosity. Sometimes it feels like a silly question with a very simple answer, eat them. In the creation stories, the origin of strawberries is important. Sky Woman buried her beloved daughter in the earth after she passed on giving birth to twins. Her final gifts, our most revered plants, grew from her body. The strawberry arose from her heart. In Potawatomi, the strawberry is Ode Min, the heart berry. Strawberries first shaped my view of the world full of gifts, simply scattered at your feet. A gift comes to you through no action of your own, free, having moved towards you without your beckoning. It is not a reward. You cannot earn it or call it to you or even deserve it. And yet it appears. Your only role is to be open-eyed and present. Gifts exist in a realm of humility and mystery, as with random acts of kindness, we do not know their source. So let your breath flow through your body and start to bring your legs back down to the ground. And if you have any type of a tie or a strap, we're going to do some seated stretch, stretching now for our legs. And our only role will be to be open-eyed and present. So take a moment and gather what you need and come to a seated posture. You can have your bottom raised up slightly on a blanket if that feels good. Lengthen through the top of your crown and start to open and close your toes. The gift of our toes. And start to point and flex your feet, feeling the muscles awakening in your legs. And we'll do a little forward fold before we go into the stretching of each leg. So sweep your arms up to the sky. Letting your breath move your body, start to fold forward. Hashimoto. And see if you can flex your toes towards your nose and small micro movements extending, feeling the stretch through your hamstrings and down the backs of your legs and all the way into your feet. Let's do that twice more. So rising up, sweeping in, drawing in the beauty of the moon and ourselves and then folding forward, releasing with your exhale. Nowhere to go, nowhere to be nothing to do, just open-eyed and present. Although in this case, open-eyed is more of a metaphor because you might wish to have your eyes closed. And rising once more up again and folding, hinging at the waist. And now if you have a tie or a strap, let's take that in the right hand. 
and bring the sole of your right foot in closer to your body and just let the strap extend the amount that feels good so that your right leg is extended out in front of you. Be careful about really straightening the knee too much. There's no need to have any joints in a locked form. And now tilt slightly forward on your pelvis because our tendency is to try to lean back. So see if you can bring your pelvis forward. And the height of your leg does not matter. Although your ego will tell you that it does. Open-eyed and present, aware of the ego's need for certain pose. We call that yesterday's pose. Let that go. And notice where in your body you're gripping and see if you can soften to those spaces. In the jaws, in the gaze, even in the finger pads holding on to your tie. And let's bring the knee in and out slightly, flexing and extending your leg. And now take the strap or tie in your right hand and bring your left hand closer to your body and start to open your leg out to the right. And now you may be holding on rather tight. So see if you can draw in ujjayi or ocean breath. And with the exhale, breathe out the tension. And now we'll return your right leg to the left. And let the strap come loose. And just wiggle waggle your legs up and down, letting all the points of your body touch the earth. And now we'll do the left side. So let's bring the tie around the left sole, the left foot, and straighten up through the crown of your head. Inhale and lift your left leg. Each side will be different. Notice the asymmetry. And maybe you wish to bend and extend your knee if that felt good on the right side. And tilt forward on your pelvis. I could do this stretch every day with such tight hamstrings and it really makes a difference. Maybe your ujjayi breath is helpful here. And now let's start to open the left leg to the left so the strap may be in your left hand now so that you can use your right hand to help balance. Even your shoulders are doing quite some work here. And 
if you if this is too intense on either side you can also lower your leg down onto a pillow it will have a different effect And now let's bring our left foot back down to the center and release the strap or tie. And again, thump out the let your legs. Let's take our fists and do little thumping along the legs, awakening all the lymph. very gently, just a little awakening motion, getting some blood flow. And we'll butterfly our legs in front of us in cobbler's pose. And honoring the moon, the strawberry moon full of gifts. See if you can lift through the crown of your head. And if it feels good, you can gently let your knees butterfly ever so gently. Less is more. Let's sweep our arms up, making the orb of the moon in a circle. And folding forward, hinging at our waist. Maybe you can see the shadow that your hands are making. And rising up, opening, sweeping up, letting your breath move your body and hinging forward. Inhaling up, and this time as we exhale, let's open to the right, so our left hand finds our right knee. Looking over to the right. Feeling the twist in the spine. And now bringing the right hand over the left knee. This is an easier cross than what we tried to do with the cow mudra earlier. And keep your left, your right hand on your left knee and bring your left arm behind you and start to twist over, over to the left. Gaze is soft, breath is full. And back to the center. One more beautiful orb of light, reaching up and folding forward. Feeling the opening in our hips. Deep inhale and let it out through your mouth. Ha. Now let the back of your head come, just relax. So there is the curve of the moon in our spine right now. Release the ego's desire to have your head closer to the earth. And feel all the heaviness in your shoulders 
releasing a grounding through the hands and through the feet. And now we'll come back to a seated posture. And if you wish, you can bring your legs more into Sukhasana just for a moment. Our affirmation today is, I let the light of the moon wash over me. I let the light of the moon wash over me. And can you feel the washing of the beauty in yourselves? From your head down to your feet as if water was coming down your body. Let's create a ball of energy now with our hands. So bring your fingertips very close together but not touching and see if you can find the energy that is flowing between your finger pads. And let's start to shape this ball of energy with your hands. And I'd say it's an imaginary ball, except that I can actually feel the warmth of it. And what color is your ball of energy? Where do you feel the energy flowing through your body? Feel your whole energy body right now and take this ball and bring it back towards your solar plexus and your, ab your upper abdomen. And let that vibrant ball of energy be a gift that enters into you. And we're going to gently now shift towards a tabletop position. So coming onto our knees, honoring your body if your knees wish to have something soft beneath them. And take a moment to tap the tops of your feet to the ground and to open through your finger pads and press up into your upper back. And now with your inhale, let's look up and then exhale and press your spine in the shape of the moon, round your spine up to the sky. And let your belly drop, inhaling, Letting the light of the moon come into your body, exhaling and pressing everything out that no longer serves you. And inhaling, belly drops, chin lifts slightly, gaze is soft, exhale and release. and tune into your body. Let this dance-like movement become yours. Pausing wherever you need. And on your last exhale, come to stillness. We're going to press to downward dog and do this very slowly, one leg at a time. Letting the heels pedal towards the earth. And if this is not good for your shoulders in this moment, you can do this up against the wall. 
Relax the back of your neck and come to stillness for a moment, gazing through your knees. Press your upper back down to the earth. And now crisscross very gently your feet so that you come to a forward fold. Our knees are generously bent. And we're going to come to halfway lift. Spine is straight. And then we're going to exhale and come back down again, framing your hands to the ground. Bring yourself to plank. And if this is too much, your knees can be down and your feet can be flat. Bring your knees down now, flatten your feet. Tuck your elbows to your body and lower yourself to the ground and then rise up to Cobra, upward facing dog, and we'll press back to downward facing dog. Lots of strength building in the shoulders. We'll do that one more time. So come forward to plank. Knees can come down, feet flatten. Lower your belly down to the ground and rise up. And now open your legs and let yourself come to child for a moment. So our big toes are together and our knees are open wide. And just let yourself rest here. This is a restorative posture. But not a posture of sukha. It's not a posture of ease. And breathe here for a moment in your child. Feeling the light of the moon washing over you. And now we're going to come to back up to downward facing dog, but just for a moment, I promise. Step forward with your right foot and we're going to bring our left knee down to the ground, flatten the, the left leg so that we are in a kneeling crescent lunge. You'll feel this in your right hip area, but also along the left hip in the front. Opening the hips and feeling the emotions flowing through. And now let's rock back and straighten the right knee. Feeling a different stretch through the back of the right leg. And anywhere that you have sensation in your body, you can bring your hand there and feel the strong muscles. Coming forward to crescent lunge, this time bring your hands up to the sky, welcoming in the moonlight, and then exhaling, folding down and rolling back. Inhaling, rolling forward, rising up. And exhaling, coming down.
This next time as we roll forward, we're going to plant our hands by our right foot and press the left leg so that it's back up in that runner's stretch. So right, left leg is long and strong. And we'll bring our hands by our foot and pop our right leg back. So we're back into the plank position, pressing up to downward facing dog. Deep inhale. And now bring the left leg forward. Again, you might have to help it on one side or the other. And let the right knee reach to the ground. Breathing into the hips. Right foot is flat to the ground and we'll start to rock back. Straightening the right leg, the left leg and bringing your head closer to your left knee. And this time when we rock forward, we're going to raise our arms up to the, the moon and exhale, flow down to the earth, pressing the left leg back. Coming forward, rising up, and then exhaling and flowing down to the ground. And one last time, rising up and exhaling down. This time as our hands find the earth, we're going to bring the right leg so that it's straight. And we're going to actually pop the right foot to meet the left. So now we're in standing forward fold. Uttanasana. Play with bending and straightening your knees. Feeling that opening. And the hamstrings and the calf. We'll bring our hands to the fronts of our knees and pitter patter our way up to re till we reach the knee and then rising up to standing posture. And let's find our Tadasana pose. Our feet are hip width. Open all your toe pads. Pull your shoulders up and down. We'll do a little bit of flow and we're going to flow our way into a half moon pose. So find the front of your mat. We'll sweep our arms up to the sky. Deep inhale and exhale, fold forward. Halfway lift. Inhale, let your breath move your body and fold. And this time, 
similar to the position we were in before, we're going to bring our right leg back. Runner stretch. And rise up. So you're balanced on both feet. And now open to warrior one, sorry, to warrior two. So your arms are straight in T and your left knee is bent. And now with your inhale, inhale back to reverse. And this time, as you come forward, you're going to find a chair or a block and you're going to start to raise your right leg until it's parallel to the earth. So we're balanced on our left foot. And you might wish to stay here or you can raise your right arm to the sky. And again, you can be doing this from a chair from a block or touching the ground, whatever your flexibility allows. Open your right shoulder, feel the wobble. One more deep breath and then bend the left knee and let yourself come back to warrior two. Reverse and flow back down to the ground, framing your left foot. Bring your left foot to join your right, you're in plank. Lower your knees, flatten your toes, tuck your elbows in and re lower yourself to the ground, rising up, upward facing dog and exhaling back to downward facing dog. Ah. Bring your right foot forward into runner's lunge, rising up and let your left leg come straight and your left foot come to warrior two arms are out in T. Feel the strength in your body and reverse your warrior. And now we'll come to half moon on the other side. So you're balancing on your right leg and your right hand is supported on a block, on a chair. Your left hand can stay on your hip, on your left hip, or it can start to come up to the sky. Now, some people are able to turn their gaze up to the sky as well, that I will lose my balance if I do that. So I'm keeping my gaze towards the earth. Breathe into the sensation and the strength in your body. And now bend the right knee and come back to warrior two. Who would have thought warrior two would feel like a rest? Hmm. Maybe feeling some beating in your heart. That's good. Reverse your warrior. And flow forward. Bring the left leg back to meet 
the right. Knees come to the ground. Feet flatten. Lower yourself down. Inhaling up to upward facing dog. And now let's just press back to child for a moment. And if you prefer waterfall pose like we did in the beginning, you can choose that now. But if you're in child, broaden your arms and pull your hands forward, resting on your forehead. Let your belly sink into the earth as your hips open, your big toes are together and your knees are open wide. And find your ujjayi ocean breath. Deep inhale through the nose Seal your lips closed. And exhale and press the air out of your body. And now start to come up gently. We're going to Roll onto our backs and do one last posture of bridge before we do our spinal twist and also come into our resting pose. So lower yourself down to the earth, really feeling each vertebrae connect to the ground and your feet are flat your knees are bent and bring your hands to touch the backs of your heels and with your inhale start to rise your hips up and with your exhale Press your feet into the ground. Now be careful to not let your knees splay open. So see that your legs are parallel. We're lifting our hips to the light of the moon, the strawberry moon. This is a nice counter stretch to the poses that we were doing, like half moon. And now let your body come down to the earth, one vertebrae at a time, and bring your knees into your chest, Wrapping your arms, if you can, around your shins. Pausing here for a moment and loving what your body can do. Press your sacrum, the lowest part of your back, to the ground. And open your arms to T, crossing your knees over to one side. And letting your gaze 
even with eyes closed softly, come to the other side. And then bringing your knees back to the center. Arms open wide, let your knees fall to the left and gaze over to the right. And back to the center. Let your legs find the ground and look around for something to keep yourself warm. We'll find our Shavasana. And I have a native, another Native American reading for us. So take a moment maybe to tuck a pillow under your knees and a blanket over your body. Maybe you wish to put socks back on your feet. Grandmother Moon, now our minds are one. We put our minds together to give thanks to our oldest grandmother, the moon who lights the nighttime sky. She is the leader of women all over the world. She governs the movement of the ocean tides. By her changing face, we measure time. And it is the moon who washes over the arrival of children here on earth. With one mind, we send our greetings and our thanks to our grandmother, the moon. Now our minds are one. And so let's take a few moments to nourish our bodies in Shavasana. And I will mind the time.
And see if you can feel the beauty of the moon's light and all the gifts of this strawberry moon gently washing like a current of energy through your body from the crown of your head and down through your eyes and through your shoulders and your arms and all the way out through your fingertips and washing over the front of your body, your chest and your belly and down the strong muscles of your legs and all the way out through your toes. And bring your awareness to the back side of your body from your shoulders and down to your back and your ribs and your hips and along the channels of energy of your backside body and all the way out through the heels and the soles of your feet. And start to wiggle your fingers and toes and bring sensation back into your body. And gently roll onto your left side. Feeling your breath. Feeling the peacefulness in your body. And when you're ready, you can come to a seated posture once again. And notice your breath is deep and full. And I'll close our practice with two sounds of the bell. And I thank you for sharing our practice together. And say namaste with the light of this moon. I bow my head to each of you. And thank you for sharing this practice today.